All right, so today I'm going to be talking about the best settings for Zen 2, Zen 3 BIOS, how to get the most out of your chip. Um, Zen 2, meaning like any of the 3600X, like any Zen 2, so just look up if your chip's a Zen 2. Zen 3, meaning 5600X, 5800X, 5900X, 5950X. So the quick settings, pretty much, if you don't care about the explanation, is you're going to want to go into your BIOS, and you're going to look for, this is pretty much for Asus BIOSes. It differs from BIOS to BIOS. You're going to want to first update your BIOS. Go to your motherboard's website, grab the BIOS file, stick it on a memory stick, go in and flash it using Easy Flash, or just look up how to flash your mother flash your motherboard with the latest BIOS. You're going to want to go and search for these options here. If you can't search for them, you're going to find them probably under AMD CBS or um, AMD overclocking. Um, you're going to want to enable both. There's two CPPC options. You want to enable both of these or turn them on. Power supply idle control, you want to put this in low current idle. You want to, you're going to want to enable C states and disable DFC states. And then you're going to want to go and enable PBO, which is precision boost overdrive. These are the best settings for your Zen 2, Zen 3 chips. And I'm going to go into explanation deeper, but again, quick, this is what you're going to want to do. I'm going to explain the curve optimizer for Zen 3 later. So how it works is for Intel, Say Intel. What? Well, let's say the Intel chip has back. Like everyone swore by Intel before. Well, Intel had. Let's say they had six cores, right, and twelve threads. What you do is you enable a manual overclock. So let's say it's five gigahertz, and this would apply to every single one of these. You want a static all-core overclock, so these are all constantly running at five gigahertz. That's the best thing to do for Intel for overclocking. And that's what people went and they started applying it to um, AMD processors. But that's not the case anymore, or just not the case at all. What you want to use is you want to use PBO. How PBO works is you're going to, let's say you have six cores. What it does is it boosts your cores in use and downclocks the cores that aren't in use. So what happens is, let's say Valorant is using two threads, mainly it's a mainly two-thread game. It's, it uses multi-core threaded rendering or whatever the fuck it's called, but pretty much uses two threads. What you'll do is, using CPPC, this function here, what it allows this, what it allows it to do is allows Windows and the chip to communicate what the best cores are. So if I open a program called HW Info, and I open this up. I can see actually what my best cores are. It actually tells me right here. My core two, sorry, my core three is my number one preferred core, then core two, then core three. So what it does is the CPPC allows my chip in Windows to say, hey, Windows, use core three because it's my best core and use core two when doing high, like gaming per se, like when you're playing Valorant. Use these two cores because these two cores are gonna boost the best. Look at this, 5,075 megahertz. I mean, gigahertz. <laughs> megahertz. Holy fuck, I can't read. 5,075 megahertz is what the maximum boost is. I was just playing Valorant. The other ones boost too, but these ones are going to mainly be used for main functions. So what it does, it says, hey, Windows, use these, downclock the other ones so I can boost these ones even higher. This is what makes PBO so great is because you can reach these high, these high, high clock speeds that you aren't going to be able to reach. If I apply a static overclock to these six cores, I'm never going to get a 5 gigahertz static overclock without destroying my chip. You'll never ever be able to chain this. Maybe if you get the God chip, maybe. But if you use PBO on a God chip, you're going to be able to boost to 5.2, 5.3. It's like probably never going to happen, but you never want you don't want to apply a, like a static overclock. It's just not going to work. You're going to crash, you're going to blue screen. Maybe you, at most you'll get 4.7 if you're lucky. This is why PBO is such a beautiful thing because you don't have to go through and do all that testing and adjust your voltages, all that stuff. It's literally just turn it on, turn on the features that go with it, low current idle to make sure that these can go down, same with C states, and then boost these cores, which is PBO, and using CPPC to boost the preferred cores. It's pretty simple and it's great, great features, and you should be taking full advantage of this on a Zen 2 and Zen 3 processor. Another thing you can do for Zen 2, I'd say, not for Zen 3, for Zen 2, you can download Ryzen Master and then you can enable Auto OC on Ryzen Master and that will give you a little bit more performance out of these because it will increase the motherboard limits and all that kind of stuff. You can also go and enable, if you go to Advanced PBO, 
You can enable all sorts of things in there as well for Zen 2. But you, for Zen 3, if you want to go even deeper and try and push your core, it's like push your chip even further, which I highly recommend you do, you want to use something called the Curve Optimizer. So in PBO, in your BIOS, Precision Boost Overdrive, you're going to put it to Advanced. Then you're going to set the the limits to the motherboard. Or you can you can look up, There's you can change all different settings into here. I recommend just motherboard. You're going to put the boost to plus 200 megahertz if you have... You can try 200 megahertz for, um, I'd say for 5900X, use 200 megahertz. 5950X, use plus 125. For 5600, 5800, you can go around. You can test between these. Probably go 200 again. 5950X, I just go 125. And then what you want to do is there's something called Curve Optimizer. And what you can do is you can set, I just start, if you're trying to go very simple, just go in there, put in an all an an all negative curve. So you're going to go in and say all, co all core. You're not going to do positive. You're going to change it to negative and put in 10 as a value. I guarantee you just doing this will give you a, a boost, just an FPS, just from putting a negative, to, putting a negative 10 curve on your advanced PBO. If you really want to go, you can go and try 15, you can try 20, and you're going to have to stress test there. But for basic people, just put in, if you have a 56 a Zen 3, just put plus 200. Most like most of you are going to be plus 200 on it. Motherboard limits, PBO advance, and negative 10 for your curve. If you really want to go in depth, what you can do is you can find out what your preferred cores are. And your preferred cores can't be set to very high negative values. So what you can do is you can actually go per core in the advanced PBO limits. And let's say my core three. So I have core three here. I'm probably going to use negative 15 on core three, negative. So probably I'd say use negative 15 on your best four cores. So I'd use it on these ones here. Negative 20 on your next best two cores. So five and six. And then negative 30 on everything else. So negative 30 on 0, 6 for me. And then all of these I'd set to negative 30. Or even negative 25. Try that. And again, like it, it, if you're going deep into PBO and Curve Optimizer, it takes a lot of tweaking around. You can just, again, just you can just leave it as enabled. I highly recommend, again, just setting the negative 10 curve and you should be fine there. If you blue screen or it crashes for whatever reason possible because you just got like a shit chip, just go and just put PBO back to enabled and leave it. But I go negative 10 and then again in depth. Like I'm running negative 15 on my best four cores, negative 20 on my next two, and then negative 30 on the rest. And it runs great. Um, that's all I can say. I'd say those are the best things for running Zen 3. Zen 2 again, I just go and use Ryzen Master to be honest after this. Or even just don't even use Ryzen Master, just put PBO to enabled. You can also go PBO advanced. You're not going to have the curve optimizer, but you can just set your motherboard limits to, you can set your limits to the motherboard, test it out. You can download CPU Z and you can just run a, you can just run a benchmark to see each time when you get in, if you're doing better single core, better, just run a quick bench CPU. Check your single thread and multi-thread scores and then go back and adjust some stuff and see if you can get better scores. It just depends on how much tweaking you want to do. But for just basic forget it and leave it settings, these here are your best bet right here. This is very simple to do. And make sure you update your BIOS. Another thing is just making sure that uh, if you have like a 30 series card, once you update, you should have something called, um, what is it? What is it called? I can't even think right now. A uh, resizable bar in your BIOS or above 4G decoding, something like that. If you have a 30 series card, enable that, enable that setting for sure in your BIOS and make sure you update your V BIOS of your GPU and you'll be able to access something called resize bar from NVIDIA, which is very, very useful. Uh, great tool. If I go to system information here, you can see my resizable bar is enabled. I have a 3090, I have updated my VBIOS, and I have enabled it in my, uh, I've enabled a sizable bar in my, in my BIOS. So, highly recommend doing this as well if you have a 30 series card. Also, undervolting 30 series cards, 
great, great thing to do. Look up how to undervolt my 3080, how to undervolt my 3070, how to undervolt my 3090, and you can pull great, great numbers with very, very, very low temps. It is a great card to undervolt. All those 30 series cards are great to undervolt. I highly recommend doing this. That's all I got to say. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments or just join my Discord and you'll see a bunch of people spewing shit and just post in there. Uh, thanks for watching.